Welcome to another edition of Maverick University. I'm your host, David Hallberg. Joining me today is Pastor Steve Zancher. Uh, pastor Zancher is uh, the pastor of Green Meadow Bible Baptist Church in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Yes. And he uh, ha- had the opportunity to preach for us in chapel at Providence Baptist College. He's going to be preaching tonight at Northwest Bible Baptist Church and uh, just did a bang up job today in chapel, and I appreciate it. Um, you are. Uh, in a unique situation, well, I guess I shouldn't say unique. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of pastors find themselves in the situation that you are um, as a bivocational pastor. Right. Um, and so you wanted to talk about this topic because obviously it applies to you. You can mm-hmm. give some practical real-world experience on it. You've pastored that church for 12 years, and the majority of the time had pastored in a bivocational role. Mm-hmm. So can you tell us a little bit about how uh, you got to be there at that church in Kalamazoo, and what was the circumstances under which you were asked and called to pastor that church? Yes, absolutely. And um, thank you for letting me be here today. It's yeah, awesome. No problem. Love the Maverick University. That I was just telling you earlier, the ones I've watched, never never had a dud yet. So hopefully we don't <laughs> mess that one up today. Right? No, no, not today. But, absolutely. Uh, no, I, so I, I, was, uh, I was actually praying about starting a church in Missouri and uh, mm-hmm. and talking to my pastor and praying about that and we had come up on a survey trip actually and my mom's church the pastor had been ill was dealing with some health issues and so I had uh, called to just let him know I was praying for him and he asked me to come and visit with him he wanted to show me some remodel work that had been done at the church because they had some uh, just some issues over the over the years of uh, some stuff being left left to, to rot basically mm-hmm. and so he had he had invested a whole bunch of his own money to keep the church doors open but he had already had a stroke before he took this church. He wanted to keep the doors open and wanted to be used by God. And so he had went ahead and uh, invested a ton of money to keep things going, but he knew he couldn't do it very long. And so him showing me around, he was trapping me into uh, mm-hmm. into an interview. Ulterior and, motives, uh, huh? Yeah, so we ended up back in his office, and he was asking me doctrinal questions, just seeing where I stood on things. I had already preached for him a couple times on different vacations, so he had heard me preach. I wasn't like a brand-new person to him. But uh, anyway, at the end of that interview, he said, look, I know Missouri needs new churches, and, and you know I don't want to pull you away from the will of God. He said, but would you pray about coming and being my associate pastor, uh, you know, I turn a lot, I give you a lot of liberty and so that you can, you know, help, help get this church going. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, after a time when, when the Lord leads, I'll resign. And if it's Lord's will, hopefully, you know, prayerfully, the church will bring you on as their senior pastor. And that's exactly what happened about nine months later. Okay. Um, anyway, I, I, we prayed about it. I told him I would, I, I talked to my pastor and um, and just there's it's a long story, so I'm going really short with it. But just with all the doors opening in Michigan and the doors shutting in Texas, and with my pastor's counsel, our church's support, they were willing to ordain me. We just knew it was the hand of God on it. We just knew he, it was His will. So that's mm-hmm. what we did. We came back to Michigan, and uh, that was of uh, uh, January of 2000 and no, oh, sorry, December 2010 in a snowstorm. We okay. left Texas. <laughs> we left sunshiny Texas and came back up to two streets over from where I grew up to pastor. Wow. This. Nine months later, they uh, they voted me in a senior pastor. So this September will be 12 years as senior pastor. And the vast majority of the time, I've been bivocational. So okay, so you pastored in Missouri? Nope, I didn't. I was. We were coming on a survey trip oh, to. Okay. We were praying about starting a church. I never and then pastored in Texas before. Is yes, where sir. you were pastoring. Yep, that's right. Got it. Yep. And so. Um, how long were you pastoring in Texas? No, I wasn't pastoring. I, my pastor in Texas. Oh, your pastor yeah. in Texas. So I, I was I was in a church in Texas. Got it. Wild Peach Baptist Church. Got and it. So uh, yes, yeah, so we were in we were in church in Texas. That's where mm. that's where I, I taught Sunday school. Ran you know ran the bus it. and stuff like that and just whatever my pastor needed, I helped him. Mm. I, I didn't actually have an official you know pastoral uh, position there Got in the it. church, any other than Sunday school teacher. Um, but yes, yeah, so they the, the the deacons and the church got behind us in ordination, and uh, gladly sent me uh, up to Michigan. So it was it was great. Got to come up to two streets over from where I grew up. Yeah, where your roots are. Yeah, it's amazing. Exactly. It's so weird. So but, it, it's a smaller church mm-hmm. when you first were the pastor yep. there, and um, it obviously the offer was, hey, come pastor us. Mm-hmm. This is what we can pay you, and you're looking at that amount, and you're saying. Yeah, this is not enough for me to live on. I, maybe they yeah. knew that as well. He said, "Hey, this is not enough for somebody to live on. You're going to have to work a second job." Mm-hmm. What was the advice, the counsel that you got about a situation like that, and um, just kind of give us the practical realities of that? Well, I'll be honest with you. I knew that I was going to have to work a lot because I and, and I didn't honestly mm-hmm. come up knowing what the salary was going to be. Okay. Um, the pastor said, hey, "I'm going to try to get you as much as I can, and I'm, I'm going to give you my salary." 
because he was already he was making so he was he's making good money. He's a wealthy man. Oh, okay. He said, so I'm going to give you the little bit that they're giving me, and and maybe a little bit more if we can, but it's not much. So you're going to have to really supplement your income pretty pretty heavily at fit, at first as the associate pastor. Sure. And so that's so anyway with the advice of my pastor, it, we just saw the, the Lord's will, and and we saw that it was His plan, and we just we just knew with the doors opening and and what it wasn't the peace that we had about it. We just said, you know what, if God's sending us, he's going to provide for us. And so we went. And uh, one of the things that we did do on the in the plan of coming up is I started calling around. Um, and the first thing that came to my mind was like, I think a bus or school bus driver might be a very, I was just in my mind thinking, I think that would be great. I already had a CDLB um, for, for driving church bus. So mm-hmm. I was hoping that maybe that would get my foot in the door. And I grew up, I went to school in Comstock, um public schools. So sure. I knew some people. So I called up there and sure enough, they're like, yes, please. We'll, we'll take, yes, you have a job. Get up here. You have a job. Really? Wow. So they hired me over the phone. I was okay. like, it's yours. We, I mean, you got, as long as you can pass a background check and do the formal stuff, um, you know, you will have to go back and do a, you got to get one more um, endorsement on your, on your license, but we'll pay for all that. Yeah. You got a job. Come on. Mm-hmm. So it was really cool. I, we got up and that's, that's what we did. I started right away driving school buses when I, when I first started doing which was a great job because you drive kids in, into school in the morning, mm-hmm. and then you've got all the middle of the day to study and do church things, and then you come back for the afternoon part. And you, you know, if you got a smaller route, you still got even, you know, you got plenty of evening left with your family and even some, you know, other church things if you still, you know, didn't get everything done during the day. You don't have to worry about weekends or anything right. like that. Yeah. No weekends. You know, lots of holidays. Um, after a while, you'd get benefits if you if you worked enough hours, you could get benefits. I never worked enough hours. I, I had smaller routes mm-hmm. just because I wanted to stay focused on what I was there for. But you know, there's a great a lot of great opportunities there. It was really neat. What would you What advice would you give to a young man who needs to count the cost and uh, maybe you know they're thinking, man, good grief! I don't know, working a t- job while I'm trying to serve in a ministry as a pastor or assistant pastor, just it's not something that sounds very ideal to me. But what advice would you give to a young man? First thing I would say is there's safety in a multitude of counselors. Mm-hmm. First thing I would say is talk to your pastor, and then gather yourself a, a, some godly men to counsel with, because not every bivocational opportunity. Um, and I can't remember if it was you I was talking to or somebody else earlier. Um, some some churches are without a pastor because they're pastor eaters. Mm. You know, they, okay. they're there on they're there like that because they have done something to to make it very difficult for a pastor to be there. Mm. Um, and so that's where the council comes in. Well, at the same time, you got to trust that God. You know, God's going to lead you where He's going to supply for you. But that'd be my first thing is seek counsel because your pastor might know first of all personality wise you know if that, mm-hmm. if that's a fit for you um he might know something about that church that says hey you know we need to pray for them but that's not your spot that's just that, that might not be the will of god sure but then the multitude of counselors is is good you know to make sure that you have that support of yeah hey that's a you know no i've heard of that church or that's a great idea you know i would be that would be the first very first thing i would say go to your pastor and and get counsel from a multitude of, of godly counselors when we're talking being bivocational, mm-hmm. uh, the time constraints yeah. come to mind. And obviously this uh, bus driver job mm-hmm. that you had talked about is probably the most ideal situation I can imagine mm-hmm. where you've got most of the day, a middle of the day free to study and make church visits. But still, it's it's a practical reality. You right. are spending time doing something yeah. other than you know pastoring a church. What challenges did you have to try and grow a church. I mean, that's the whole right. point. Try to win people, get people yep. baptized, you know, add to the membership of the church. Right. What were the challenges? How did you overcome those um, with your time schedule, mm-hmm. making sure you had enough time for family, church, work, yep. everything that's demanded of you? And that's, uh, that's it's, it's uh, uh, the, I'm trying to think about the answer here. The biggest con to bivocational mm-hmm. pastoring is time. That's the issue. It's it really that is the only negative. I mean, I, I mean, I, I don't mind working. I, I don't sure. mind working, you know. And I enjoyed most of the jobs I've had. I think all of them I've enjoyed. There's not a one of them I was like, oh, great, I got to do that again. That was, I mean, they're all been really fun jobs. Um, and so it's it's always really been time. And and that's you know I'm not the most. Uh, I'd say administrative is not my not my strongest. I'll, I'll be willing to admit that. That's not, mm-hmm. I'm not the strongest administrator. And so to give you some, give, give anybody a, uh, a clear, 
uh, how to on the budgeting time, I don't know if I could give you, but it's the priorities that I fall back on. And, and so a lot of, a lot of my time is there's been a lot of resets in my time where I have to go, Oh, you know what? Hey, listen, I got to get that back to right. I got to get that right. You know, and my priority mm-hmm. is God first, then my family, then church, then the secular work. And I, and, and if, if they start getting mixed up, that's where that reset takes place. And then I'm not spending the time with God I'm supposed to. I'm not spending mm-hmm. the time with my family I'm supposed to. And I purposely will say, listen, I've got to do what I've got to do to make this, th- this has to get back to where it's supposed to be. And so I, uh, in 12 years, there's been many times where, yeah. I, you know, sometimes multiple times in a week where I'm like, oh, I got my priorities messed up. I got to get this fixed again. I got to get this back. But I mean, it's really just trying to have that, that submission to that priority mm-hmm. and then work, uh, work those priorities, you know, and you know, it, it, there's a sacrifice. You're going to have sleepless nights. You're going to have times where, um, you know, you, your kids are going to get a little sad. They're going to have to sacrifice sometimes, you know, mm-hmm. that you get, it's, it's not, there's no perfect plan. So sometimes they're going to have to go without, but then you make sure that you make up for that somehow and spend that little extra time with them. And then vice versa with the church and work, you know, you might have a bigger bill coming up. You might have to put in a couple extra hours. Then you have to, you know, then you got to make up for that. Now, now you're cramming on Saturday night to make sure you got your messages ready for, for Sunday. So yeah. there, it is, there's a, there's a lot of juggling that goes on. So to say that this is my schedule locked in, no. that's not reality. Not, no, it's constant no. flexing, being flexible, mm-hmm. change, deal with yep. the change as it's going on and keeping yeah. those priorities right. in order as you go. Yeah. For some people, they could prob- they could maybe have that more locked down than me. More rigid, yeah. Right. I- I've just never been that rigid. I- my pastor, I- I- the one thing I always loved about him, he's- he always had his door open and he-, and he tried not to do a lot of meeting schedules. And obviously in a church like with Brother Kavanaugh, it's too big. You can't do that. But with a little small little local church, sometimes you're able to have that flexibility. And that was one of the things I tried not to make super hard schedules. Schedules. I want people to be able to knock on a door and say, Pastor, hey, can I talk to you? Come on in. Let's just go. Let, let's go and just make yep. that time for them. I'll, I'll rearrange stuff. You know, God's, mm-hmm. uh, I've, I've been pastoring, preaching, you know, every Sunday for 12 years and I've, I've never got up to the pulpit and go, I don't know what to say today. Like I, said, <laughs> I have nothing for you. Yeah. I, you know, I ran out of time and I just have nothing, nothing wrote down. So, you know, I've always, always been able to have something mm-hmm. and being resourceful in that regard too, because sometimes it, you know, soul winning is super important. You know, if you're going to build a church, you got to spend them hours out there knocking doors, loving on your community and pastoring people. And but you also have to preach. And, Mm -hmm. you know, there's the the power of of the preaching and the foolishness of preaching. So you got to be resourceful sometimes. You know, there's been times where in the change of time, I've had to use Internet resources, you know, Mm -hmm. in order to try to build a, a sermon stir to try to get me going, you know, it's because I just I didn't have the time and preparation, and and I'm not talking about outright plagiarizing your message, but you know what I'm saying, like yeah. finding some of these different resources that might help stir something because your your mind has been kind of all over trying to keep yeah. those priorities. So so while you know soul winning, there's no shortcut to that. You've just got to do the time. Oh yeah, you know, dealing with people, you've just got to you do, do the got, time exactly. And in other areas, you can find, hey, I can be a little bit more efficient in this mm-hmm. area mm-hmm. to free up the time over here. Exactly. And sometimes you take from one area, to, you know, with family and stuff like that. You know, maybe spend mm-hmm. a little bit, maybe maybe a bigger day with them, or maybe a bigger activity, and that'll buy you a little bit of time to to come. You know, but the biggest thing is, I always go back to: if I lose my family, I lose my ministry. And mm-hmm. um, you know, if I and first even before that, if I lose my walk with God, I have no power. Yeah. And there's been times, and I'll be honest with you, there's been times where People will say, "Hey, good preaching afterwards and stuff like that." I knew God wasn't with me on that one, mm-hmm. you know, and not that not that I preached anything unbiblical, but my priorities weren't right, and he was he was chasing me for it, and he still used me for his glory, but I didn't get to enjoy that use. Yeah, does that make sense? It makes sense. Yeah, because I I didn't have the joy of the Lord in that because I yeah. I was really doing that in my flesh. He still used it, mm-hmm. and he still his message went out because his words always always going to be powerful. But I didn't get to enjoy being used because I had my priorities out of whack. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's been, you know, as I'd say in these last few years, last four years, maybe, maybe more, that's really been a just a, I, I, I try even harder than ever before because I know what it's like to be used by God. And I just don't ever want to stand up there on a Sunday and not have his power. Once you've experienced it, you don't want exactly. to Exactly. I don't ever want, I don't ever, I hate that feeling mm-hmm. of feeling like something messed up. 
So I want to go to something more practical, kind mm-hmm. of go back. You talked about the bus driver job. That was kind mm-hmm. of the initial thing. And mm-hmm. then you later on, you referenced, you know, jobs. So obviously right. you've held other different positions, uh, which uh, what other you know, types of side incomes or have you had um, that have worked well for you or maybe some that or haven't worked? Out. Yeah. Well, bus driving was the first one. Yeah. Um, and then I started doing um, uh, I try to pull RVs for okay. a little while. And uh, when I pulled the RVs, it was lucrative, um, but it was, it, it, you know, it was, it pulled me away, you know, and, and it wasn't, it was only lucrative the further you went. Oh, okay. So the short yeah. routes that made sense didn't make any money for me. Got it. And so then I am finding myself going on the other side of Iowa going, I'm not called to Iowa. <laughs> now, obviously I can be a blessing anywhere I'm at, yeah. but I'm not called to Iowa. I'm called yeah. to Kalamazoo, Michigan. Yeah. And uh, under conviction, I only did that job for maybe six, seven months. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I can't. That's just not going to work. I did the bus driving probably four years, almost okay. five years maybe. So that one, I probably did the longest out of them. And then, then I did the pulling RVs. So Okay. Yeah, so th- that's not necessarily the most more lucrative ones or not even the, the right. most ideal. Right. You have to kind of judge that yourself. Yeah. You're getting ready to get out of by being bivocational. Um, and um, and so can you tell us a little bit about that process of, of getting to that point? Because obviously – at some point, you've got to take that leap of faith exactly. and, and and go full time mm. as that pastor and you know living on that pastor's salary. How does that work? How does that feel? How do you get to that point? Yeah, uh, well, I had talked about earlier in this, you know, thinking about the scriptural aspect of that is you have, you know, you have the scriptural principles that says the local church should take care of their pastor mm-hmm. when they have the means to do so. Yes, sir. And uh, and you know the the message I shared with the with the young men today in that area of of bivocational pastor is yes, it's a biblical principle, but sometimes they're just not going to have the means to do it or mm-hmm. the maturity. You know, in the case of the Apostle Paul. In, in Corinth, they didn't have the maturity. I'm sure they had the means. They didn't have the maturity. Our church has always had the maturity. They've always wanted to take me on, and they've always wanted to do that. We just haven't had the means. And now over the last couple of years, we've gotten to a place where they could. But with the economy the way it is, kind of hung me up. I really, if the economy would have stayed the same, from, you know, from our the last administration of era, you know, pre-COVID, yeah. if, if the economy had been pre-COVID, I'd have been full-time pre-COVID. Yeah. I mean, I was right there. I was almost there then. And so about a year ago, a little over a year ago, I quit for about six months. Yeah, it was about a year and a half ago. I quit okay. for like six months, and then you know the milk and milk and eggs went up, and I was like, "Oh, oh yeah. we're we're going backwards. We need. I, I'm not going to go backwards. We're gonna. I'll go out and pick up a day or two a week, and that's what we did. So we we just started picking up uh, a little bit uh, here and there. Um, the current employment is with a, a semi truck company in okay. our area, a local guy, a uh, uh, born-again believer. Uh, I believe he's got a genuine testimony, mm-hmm. knowing Jesus is Savior. His in-laws are actually independent Baptists. Um, okay. He's familiar with the independent Baptist churches. He just, he likes it. He's, he's in a more looser church. Um, but uh, just really, he's been a great boss to work for. And he's been very, very, uh, he's given me a lot of liberty as a pastor. Basically, I can't work today. Okay. I can't work nice. all this week. Okay. I can work three days this week. Great, perfect. I'll put you. In, I'll put you in a truck and get wow. you going. Praise and, the Lord for that. And they pay, they pays me top rate too. So it's been very hard to come out of that, honestly, because yeah. because the flexibility has been so nice. Yeah. Um, but this last week in Belize, the Lord really worked on my heart about how much more I could be doing. You know, with those days, mm. as much as I enjoy doing it, it's really it, I, I, it's it's time. To, to step out by faith and just yeah. really focus on my community and, uh, you know, and love on those people that God's called me to. And just, I, I, we've got the means to do it now and, and we're there. Mm-hmm. Um, there's going to be, I'll have to take a little bit of sacrifice here and there, but it's okay. You know, it's, 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 it's worth it. So absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on and absolutely. joining us for this. And yeah. I'm sure a lot of young men who are facing similar situations about to go into a situation like that can be encouraged by it. And, mm-hmm. Uh, find that, hey, this is what God has for me to do. It's possible we can build a church, we can get this done. Yeah, so man. thank you so much. You're welcome. Can I add one more thing? There yes, is sir. a great need. There is a great need all across this country. There's churches with mortgages paid off, church buildings available, a few people in the church ready for a man of God to come in there and say, hey, listen, I'll, I'll make the sacrifice and uh, you know, and 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 take this work and, and do something with it. So, uh, I'm, I hope it helps somebody. It'll be a blessing. That's perfect. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you, brother. Make sure you check out our the uh, the other episodes on the YouTube channel and also on the audio only platforms as well. Make sure that you like, that you leave a comment and a review, and that you also share it with somebody uh, who can also be benefited. Thank you so much for joining us.